In January 2010, two graduate students at Texas Tech University were conducting research on energetic or explosive compounds, funded by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. The students were tasked with synthesizing and performing tests on a new compound, a derivative of nickel hydrazine perchlorate. Initially, the compound was made in small batches of less than 300 milligrams. But the two students were concerned about potential variability among different small batches of the compound, which could affect later test results. So they decided to scale up the synthesis to make a single batch of approximately 10 grams, enough for all of their testing. They believed that keeping the solid compound wet with the solvent would keep it from exploding. After producing the larger batch, the more senior graduate student observed that it contained clumps that he believed needed to be broken up prior to testing. While wearing safety goggles, he transferred half of the new compound into a mortar, covered the compound with a solvent, and used a pestle to gently break up the clumps. After some time, he took his goggles off and walked away. A short time later, he decided to stir the compound once again. He did not replace his goggles. As the pestle pressed against the compound, it detonated. The graduate student was seriously injured, his left hand severely damaged by the force of the explosion, causing the loss of three fingers, perforation of his eye, and cuts and burns to other parts of his body. Post-accident photos and video show extensive damage as the explosion fractured the lab bench, shattered bottles, and sprayed the lab with projectiles. Professor Dominic Casadante was head of the Texas Tech Chemistry Department at the time of the accident. From my perspective as department chair, you go through the emotional trauma of, oh my gosh, somebody that I know has gotten very seriously hurt to soul searching, why did this happen? With these academic incidents, people like to focus on the immediate actions of the individual involved and try to poke holes and, and, and with hindsight, you know, assert some sort of blame on the incident, on the individual involved. And what we have to recognize is that there are bigger uh, systems at play here that can influence safety. The CSB investigation at Texas Tech found deficiencies in each layer of safety management within the institution. These included insufficient safety accountability and oversight by the principal investigators, the chemistry department, and the university's administration. And according to investigators, there were also important gaps beyond the university itself. I think that the way we were a year and a half ago is pretty representative of the way that a lot of universities, especially chemistry departments, are around the country. The main lesson I would really like, and it's the way that I start a lot of my talks on safety, is there but for the grace of God go you, that is to say, your universities. The victim at Texas Tech had been working on the energetic materials project for about a year at the time of the accident. But the CSB found that he did not receive any specific formal training on working with potentially explosive compounds. The two principal investigators believed they had verbally established a 100 milligram limit on the production of energetic materials. But the CSB investigation found there was no formal system for communicating this limit or verifying compliance. None of the lab researchers believed that a strict 100 milligram limit existed.